So how is my health? It has been two weeks since I had my emergency blood transfusion. And in this video today, I'm gonna give you all the updates. I have had all kinds of things tested and done, and I'm actually sitting in the parking garage right now. I have a doctor's appointment this morning to test my hemoglobin. Hopefully, it went up from a nine. We're gonna find out. But stick around in this video because I'm gonna give you an update on my health. When I get home later, my husband, Randy, is gonna give you an update on his health. You know, he had a heart attack, he had a hole in his heart, he had that fixed, and I'm actually gonna get him to sit down with me and we're just gonna bring you all up to speed on how we're feeling and at the very end of this video, and yes, I'm gonna keep it to the very end, I am gonna answer the number one question that you all have asked both of us when we talked about our medical issues. Did we get vaccinated? We're gonna tell you at the end of the video. So I'll see you after I get out of my doctor's appointment. Well, that was quick. Got my blood drawn. And I asked the lab technician if I would know today, like the answer of my hemoglobin. And she said, oh Lordy, honey, no. There's a lab in my doctor's office and that's where I had my blood drawn. And she said, this is a process. You are not gonna know this today. So looks like my update video for you all will continue tomorrow. Well, I finally got the results of my blood test and I'm gonna tell you what the results are in just a second. Let me just bring everybody up to speed. My name is Renee, I'm 50 years old and I had to have an emergency blood transfusion about two weeks ago and get two units of blood. So I did a whole video while I was there at the hospital getting their transfusion. I'll link it right up here if you wanna know all the details, what happened, why I had to have the transfusion, but my hemoglobin was at a 6.2. I'm going to bring you up to date on what is going on with all of my medical issues. I've had a ton of tests. I have a bunch of results and I'm going to share that with you. Okay, so how am I feeling? I got the results of my blood test. I had the test two weeks after my blood transfusion and you know that before my transfusion my hemoglobin was at a 6.2. The day that I got the transfusion, they tested my blood again, and I was at a nine. And two weeks later, I'm at a 10.5. Yeah, 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 me. 10.5. That is super good, but it is not perfect. A woman is supposed to have a hemoglobin. I cannot say that word. A hemoglobin of 12. 12 is normal. I'm at a 10.5, but it's only been two weeks. My doctor told me to continue taking my iron supplement, do exactly what I'm doing. That's improvement in two weeks, and I'm gonna have my blood tested again a month from now. So we'll see. So in the meantime, here's what I've experienced. A lot of my symptoms that I had before I had the blood transfusion, things that I didn't know were related to my hemoglobin, were the aching legs and feet. I was constantly having aches and pains from the calf down. My feet ached, my calves didn't want to stretch out, and I am happy to report. I mean, this is like such big news. The day after I got the blood transfusion, that symptom has completely gone away. My legs don't ache, my feet don't hurt, my calves are able to stretch. I go on my walk every morning, I'm walking further distance than I did before I had my blood transfusion. I'm working my six and seven hour shifts at the ice cream shop where I'm on my feet for hours on end and my feet don't hurt. This is just huge. I don't know why it's better, but it is. My feet and my legs are completely fine. No more aches and pains. It did take me about a day or two or three for me to actually feel the effects of the blood for me to start feeling better and I got my blood transfusion on a Thursday. And by Saturday, I was like, huh, I'm kinda, I'm kinda feeling better. Just feeling a little spunky. And then by Sunday, I could just feel a huge difference. No more wanting to lay my head down. I have not had those feelings of exhaustion or like brain fog. It's gone. I can just it's hard to explain because I didn't realize that I felt bad before, but now that I've gotten the blood transfusion, I just feel so much better. I have more energy. 
and I tell everybody I feel more steady and grounded and I I just don't know how to explain that to you but I just feel steady solid grounded no more lightheadedness which was not happening all the time it would just happen at random but I have had none of that I haven't had any headaches I would have headaches just like your typical person would have headaches or so I thought but since my blood transfusion I have not had a headache which is good news as I explained in my other video and make sure to watch that one if you want all the details my doctor thinks my low hemoglobin number was due to my periods getting increasingly heavier since I've gotten older funny thing is the day that I got my blood transfusion I started my period which was kind of counterproductive I'm sitting there getting blood but yet like you know what's going on so I just I have not had my period since I am due to start next week for those of you that want to know so it'll be interesting to see how that goes the nurse who said to me um, in the hospital when I was getting my transfusion Renee you probably don't realize how bad you feel but once you get the blood you're gonna realize how bad you did feel she was so right I did not realize how bad that I felt and now that I have the blood and my hemoglobin hemoglobin number is going up and the oxygen is moving in my body I do feel significantly better hopefully it'll just continue to improve as my number goes up to where it should be which is a 12 I'm hoping fingers crossed that when I get my blood tested again in a month I am close to normal okay so all of the other tests I've had done I had my mammogram earlier this year normal I went to my gynecologist had my pap smear and my annual checkup with her normal I did have some conversations with her about my heavy periods again watch the other video I explain all that to you but my pap smear everything normal I had my thyroid tested twice y'all I ran the full panel a blood test for my thyroid my thyroid is functioning completely normal I had a thyroid ultrasound because it looked to me as if my thyroid was a little bit enlarged because as you know I had strep pneumonia two summers ago and it affected my thyroid but everything is fine no nodules no cyst my thyroid is not enlarged it is normal size and my doctor says this is just what my thyroid is so my thyroid is fine and none of these symptoms I'm having are coming from my thyroid what are you doing back there? <laughs> so my next steps are really nothing do what I've been doing get my blood tested in a month and we'll just see what my hemoglobin number is I'm interested to see what happens when I'm on my period next week is it gonna be you know because I have more blood in my body is it gonna be normal heavy light weird like is anything strange gonna happen I don't know but what I did do is for my purpose and my doctors because I'm not gonna remember all this information on the day that I got my blood transfusion I decided to start a journal like a journal of my symptoms how I'm feeling how my periods going is it heavy is it light am I getting cramping like I'm just documenting all of the stuff for myself so if questions come up and I need to look back I can go oh yeah I forgot that this happened on this day or you know you know what I mean so that's what's up with me I'm feeling so much better now I've got some errands to do I'm gonna run to the grocery I gotta run to the shop y'all know I'm busy 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 all the time and a lot of you all said Renee slow down take a break I don't want to y'all this is like it's ingrained in me I am just busy I like to be busy I like to have my mind active I'm involved in things I'm always planning something thinking up something I just I don't like to sit around so I'm not gonna slow down I'm gonna keep doing what, what makes me happy but just know that I am taking care of myself I'm doing the right thing but today I gotta run out and get some stuff done when my husband gets home later today after we've had dinner so I'm gonna let him tell you himself how he's feeling he is gonna sit down with me and y'all know he doesn't like to talk directly to the camera so I don't know how this is gonna play out I may have to do this like interview style but he is gonna tell you how he's feeling what's going on with his heart since his heart attack and then as promised we're gonna answer the question 
did we get vaccinated? We're gonna give you our answer and I am gonna drop a bombshell. Something you are not expecting me to say, but you gotta stick around to the end of the video. You ready? Okay, so he's home and I'm gonna ask you questions and so you can tell everybody how you're feeling. All right. Okay, so how do you feel after you had your heart attack? Feeling good. <laughs> I told y'all this was gonna be tough. But what was the hardest part about having a heart attack? Well, afterwards, I had to be very still. It took me longer to recover. I couldn't really work that much. I couldn't do anything at work. I had to basically be on light duty. And then, because I had the hole in the heart, I felt like I was walking on eggshells on anything I did until they went in and fixed the hole. So both yeah. times they went in your groin to, yes. to get the blockage out and to fix the PFO. So what was that like? Like the recovery from them going in your groin? Uh, it hurt. <laughs> it hurt? <laughs> it was sore. It was bruised. It was bruised. Really, really badly bruised. And once again, for at least two weeks after, I couldn't do anything because of my groin. Are you still on all of your medications? Yes. Blood thinners, they did stop the aspirin, but you're still on... High blood pressure uh, medicine, cholesterol yeah. medicine, blood thinners. Something is making his hands itch really bad, so we had to add a Claritin to the mix, which has stopped the itching. What do you do next? What's got to happen next? Next, I go to the doctor in October, and I'm assuming he'll take me off the blood thinners. But how do you feel? How do you feel that all this has happened and it's been fixed, and how do you feel, like physically? Uh, physically now, I'm fine. I mean, I'm back at work, climbing ladders, everything I did before. So there's his update. He's feeling fine. I can tell he's feeling fine. And so now we're gonna answer the big question. Are we vaccinated? Yeah. Yes, we got vaccinated. We got the Moderna ba vaccine back in March. We got our second shot in April and we are fully vaccinated. And then the bombshell is, I got COVID. I've never told you all that, but I did. I didn't. I, <laughs> you what? I didn't. He didn't get it. I got COVID in July. It was no fun. I was so mad because I was vaccinated, but yet I caught it. But luckily, Brecken was out of town for the majority of the time. She wasn't in the house. Randy, when I got tested and realized I was positive, because honestly, I just thought I had a really weird like summer cold. When he found out I was positive, he moved upstairs for my entire quarantine. So I basically didn't see him. I'm completely recovered now. He never got it. And yeah, we're vaccinated and got I got COVID. Yeah. So there you have it. Straight from the horse's mouth. Like I said in my other video, since we have gotten into our 50s, Randy got there before me. He's 52. It'll be 53 in November. Yes. Yep. 53 in November. I just turned 50. Getting older has not been kind to us. It has honestly sucked. He had kidney stones. He had a heart attack. I had the whole hemoglobin thing with the blood transfusion. And then I caught COVID. So it's not been kind. So we're hoping from here on out, it's just uphill. But that's our update. If you have any questions, let us know. And we'll see you later.